Okay. Hi. Good morning, Shane. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm so happy that you are here, that you are our number one guest. Um, just so that we can be clear, this is Give Them Their Flowers, which uh, is a segment that I wanted to really create and a platform that I wanted to create with Dance Umbrella that basically brings forward um, inspirational and influential artists like yourself to talk, very kind of you. their, <laughs> to talk about their history their current work um and what any you know future plans for their creativity um, um and what you have in store but also to give you a platform to kind of give shouts outs and mentions to other people that have really been influential in your career to date so before we get into it Please let everybody know who you are and what it is that you do. Um, my name is Shelley Maxwell and I am a creative artist. Mm -hmm. um, and I do uh, choreography, movement direction across theatre and film and stage. And also a, I'm a performing artist still, always at my core. So, you know, if something comes along or I feel like uh, I still want to kind of move my dancing feet, why not? <laughs> and can I just add like a dope ass person onto the end? <laughs> because um, this is, such, you know, when I was thinking about people that I really wanted to come onto the platform, um, your name instantly was like one of the people that jumped out to me um, as just a real influential um role model for me as well being a black female within the industry um and you really set a awesome awesome blueprint for me to be able to kind of go forward in 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 whatever ventures I do so yes this whole thing is just going to be about the awesomeness that is you but before we do that I kind of wanted to just play a little bit of a game is that all right okay that's great let's get that, that, awesome. that flowing so, rrr, Shake it off, shake it off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is some quick fire round questions. Right. Try your hardest to keep them as concise as possible, but also elaborate at the same time. <laughs> I don't know how you do that, but you're working out. Um, so yeah, let's let's just crack on with it and see how you get. Okay, so brrr, drum roll. Earliest dance memory. Earliest dance member dancing in my grandmother's backyard, barefooted mm -hmm. in Jamaica, singing tunes and creating my own thing. How old was you, roughly? Ah, oh, I would say maybe like six. Wow. Yeah. Okay, I'm, we're we're gonna come back to that. Um, favorite song to get down to at the moment? Oh, a favorite song to get down to at the moment. Um, oh the God, Jake. My shoulders are going, but there's so many of them. It's that's a difficult one because every day is a different song. Okay, um, well, let's rephrase it. The last song you got down to at the moment. The last song that I got down the to at the moment. That got you. Um, Burner Boy, wonderful. All right. <laughs> yes, man. All right. Next one. Other than you might have answered this, but other than you, who's the best dancer in your family? Oh, other than me, who's the best dancer in my family? Oh my God, it has to be my kid. Yeah. My daughter. Yeah, she's fire. She gets them jeans. And it's natural fire. She's just like mm -hmm. dancing from within. It's great. That's what we like to see. Pass on them <laughs> jeans. All right, next one. You're doing good. Um, the best dance advice you received and from whom? The dance is bigger than you. And it was from a gentleman who's no longer with us. His name is Howard Daly, and it was in Jamaica. Um, and it was when I was dancing with the University Dance Society in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And he had to sit us down because there was a little bit of people trying to do this. I want to be ahead of you thing, and, mm -hmm. and I want to be in the front. And mm -hmm. it became quite politicized, mm -hmm. um, as dance does get. Mm -hmm. um, and he just sat us down, and he was just like, to dance is bigger than you. And that's always and with stayed that with cadence me as well, like the drama. with the cadence, oh, trust. Um, because it's like, yeah, absolutely, it is bigger than me. Mm. Um, so that stayed with me. That kind of has been at the root of me, that's and awesome. it keeps me grounded. That's awesome. 
Okay. Woo! Okay, so the last dance spectacle that left you like in awe. The last dance spectacle that left me in awe, apart from like my kid dancing in the front room. Um, Maybe it's that. I would say... <laughs> Um, I would say maybe it was um, Betroffen Height at Sadler's Wells, Crystal Pipe. Lovely. That stayed with me for a number of years, that, that, mm. that work. What roughly, um, when was that on? You know, it's been a, a few years back, Jade, and that's how in awe I was with yeah. the work and with her that's and what she did. Mm. Um, so I would say maybe it was even four years ago. Okay. At Sadler's. Thing, all the things have come, yeah, all the things have come, but nothing has kind of like knocked Ooh. me over the head. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like that particular okay. piece. Um, something that was difficult for you to learn. Something that was difficult for me to learn. Um, is this kind of dance related or as a human being? Mm, let's say both. Let's say as a human being and then a dance like move or step that kind of took you a minute. Um, I would say to embrace my limitations. So when I was uh, a younger dancer, mm -hmm. I wasn't the flexible dancer. Mm -hmm. So there are lots of people who are like very uh, gymnastic oriented and very bendy. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't that person. I was a groove person. I was mm -hmm. like, put me on the floor and I'm gonna give you my life. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I remember as a kid being envious, if I'm being honest, yeah. of the bendy, bendy people and I, I worked my body as I got older to try to become that bendy person yeah. to get that leg really high. Uh, yeah. And I think I realized in my later teenage years that it was important. Mm. It was more about like dance is about the essence and mm. it's about sharing your energy on stage. So yes. I was able to get the flexibility, mm -hmm. but I realized that where my power kind of lay was in the fact that because I lacked the flexibility I pulled on the resource of just the okay. dancing essence and then when I realized I could marry the two it was mm -hmm. over so that was the lesson it took me a while to learn okay. and the bigger lesson is be you Ooh. stand in your power and be you because no one else is you why are so you that was a bigger like, lesson like why okay let's carry on because what okay so what would you tell your younger self oh to my younger self you're not crazy it's gonna happen um we're gonna we're going gonna up touch on that <laughs> that's some real stuff what you just said there but carry on yeah because uh, growing up in Jamaica at the time, dancing was viewed as a hobby. And, you know, God bless my younger self. For whatever reason, I just had this drive. And I I knew that when I watched, we only had like one TV station in Jamaica. And I grew up watching all these old MGM musicals, mm. you know, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, Mary Poppins. And I would see these people on the television. I'd go, there's something inside me that mm -hmm. says that's what I need to do. Mm. But in Jamaica, I didn't have anything to facilitate the how. And my family, I don't think they quite understood that this child is actually really serious. That's what she wants to do. To do. Um, yeah. We're gonna, and, we're and, gonna come back to this because I want this to be quick fire round questions. Yes, yeah, so sorry, and, go and for where it. Where you're going, it's for a whole nother section. So keep that as a pin. But yeah, we're gonna- pin, I pinned it. And so so say that one more time you're not crazy it's gonna happen it's gonna happen yeah mm. okay let's carry on um and last one when was the moment that you fell in love with what you do um there have been many moments and that's what I love about what we do mm -hmm. because if you allow yourself to grow and change mm -hmm. the moments just keep rippling down Mm. Um, but I think I fell in love with what I do at, in my grandmother's living room, wow. you know, trying to emulate what I saw on the television, mm. whether it was Michael Jackson music videos or whether it was the MGM musicals, mm. it was just raw and pure and innocent. And it was just joy and it made me happy. It made me feel good. And I was like, I want this feeling to last all the time, every day, all forever. the time. Exactly. Ah!
everyone. Clap. <laughs> that was intense already. Like, okay, let's carry on because you were touching on some really, really poignant things there. And I kind of want to dabble into that or, or delve into that a little bit more. So if you could like narrow that, this is really hard, but I'm yes. going to say it. If you could like narrow down your entire career from like when you were talking about being back home in Jamaica, um, all the way to where you are now in your career and what that's encompassing, what yeah. would be those five really, you know, career gear shifts that you've taken in order to get to that place? You know, that's quite a difficult question, but um, I think um, you can do that. I think you got it. <laughs> Thank you for your faith. You got um, it. No, I think I think the first one would have to be when you fall in love with it, when right. you find your passion. Right, right. So I think that's coming back to my grandmother's house and watching television because mm. at the time you know I mean I'm not trying to age myself but the internet wasn't a thing yeah. so how am I getting this information and yeah. how am I seeing things it's yeah. through the television so yeah. it's watching the musicals it's watching the Fred Astaire's it's seeing the Michael Jackson's yeah um and it's exploring the body and it's going this is something that I love and I want to do and then my mom seeing that and going oh, okay well I'm going to put you in dance class right. so you know that's kind of like what I'd consider the first shift yeah. Even though I'm a kid and I can't quite figure out how it's going to be a career, mm -hmm. like that's the first shift. Yeah. So it's getting in the love to it. it. Right, right. Yeah. Um, and then the second shift, I guess, would be the training. So okay. it would be training in Jamaica um, okay. and honing my performance skill. Because in Jamaica, we have these kind of dance competitions, but they're, they're cultural competitions. So they're, it's called festival. Mm -hmm. And so as a kid from like, say eight, um, I was going into these competitions with the dance groups that I danced with to perform on stage to a live audience. Um, and it was exploring all different kinds of dance. So it wasn't just one kind of structure of contemporary dance or modern dance. It was a variety. It was dance hall. It was popular culture. It was folk forms. Right. And so I got to kind of put my foot in everything. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'd say I honed my performance side, mm -hmm. doing these things from like age eight through to being a teenager mm -hmm. to get the confidence of going, I love being on stage mm. and I love dancing. Um, and then I think identifying that I really wanted to do this, but identifying that I then needed to gain more training and deciding to go to school in Cuba. So that was a huge shift. Wow. Okay. So, so wh when did you, when did you move? Um, or actually, it? you know what? London has a little bit to do with it because I was, in Jamaica, you kind of, after you study, you go to university. Yeah. So I started university doing this thing called actuarial science. Okay. Which is this very mathematical career because <laughs> I'm good at maths. All um, right. And quickly while I was studying that, I realized that I didn't want to be doing that because I ended up mm. just in the theater on the campus, mm. sleeping there, eating there, dancing there, just constantly doing things that were theater oriented came to London to dance for the summer, fell in love with London, fell in love with not having to do university studies and going, you need to stop your actuary science program and you need to go to dance school. Mm. Came back home and stopped university and decided that I was gonna to go to Cuba and I was gonna to go to school there. And that's what I did. So when and you that, came when you sorry I'm, I'm just trying to picture and get your whole life in that in that number two section so when you yeah. came here to London did you come by yourself was it a exchange trip or it was an exchange trip I came across uh with a lady but kind of on myself on my own sorry um because from early I started traveling on my own I would decide that I was going to go to New York for the summer. I had family there mm -hmm. and I wanted to go to like the Alvin Ailey school. Yeah, yeah. So I would, I would save up the funds. I would hop a plane. I would go to a new country to discover dance in a new way. Awesome. So with the London trip, I came across with a lady who was teaching and I was assisting her a little bit, but then I'd go off and do classes on my own. 
um, right. just to explore what dance was in London. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, and, and realized that I really wanted to take it seriously and you had to level up. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. going to dance school was my next best bet at doing that. Um, and why Cuba? I lived in Jamaica. It was close by. Yeah. They're renowned for their training. Um, and so, yeah, just hopped a plane, Jade, went across the Havana, Boy. went to the dance school there. Okay. Okay. So you're, we're at Cuba. We're number two. You're at Cuba. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. How many years was you in Cuba for? I guess is the last as part. In, as there for like two years. Okay. And it was phenomenal dance training. Mm -hmm. It was great as well. I mean, they had no mirrors in the dance school. So the entire dance school has no mirrors. I know, it's which about is feeling. It's, it's about feeling, Jade. That and it's is. about understanding your body. So mm -hmm. you're training daily without a mirror and you're you're being corrected by your teacher. So you have to have the faith in them wow. and the faith in yourself mm -hmm. that you sense and feel your body differently. You learn your body in a different way. You have to tune into everything. Mm. Um, and yeah, it was just really great two years of my life. Um, Life-changing, altering. And left there and came back home to Jamaica mm. and got injured. And then I think this would be another shift where I lost my confidence because I had a major injury mm. and stopped dancing for two years. Wow. So I had two years of intense training and then two years of not dancing um, because it's, it's quite hard as a dancer sometimes. The injuries, they come. And, you know, I had many injuries up to that point and I always like got back up on my feet. But for whatever reason, this one kind of shattered my confidence because it made me go, what are you doing? Mm. This is a career. What happens when you do get a big injury and you can't dance anymore? Mm -hmm. Is it really something that you want to do? It's quite risky. Mm. Um, but what that break afforded me was the answer to my question, which was stepping away from dance made me realize how much it meant and how much I needed it. Wow. I got a degree in web designing in the interim. <laughs> so are you that? I took I took the two years away and I went, you know, went and I got a web designing degree. And when I graduated and I, I had my degree in my hand, I went, okay, that's that's done. done. Now it's time to go back to what you're really supposed to be doing, which is dancing and creating and doing choreography. So where so I've never used my web designing like degree. Where was your injury by that point at the end of the degree? I think the bigger question is where was my mental well-being? Right. The injury was fine. That had been healed. Yeah. The bigger was... injury was to my confidence and my mental well-being. Get it. And get so it. the two years afforded me to really spend the time to mm. interrogate what injuries meant in dance, mm. how I was going to get over them, how I was going to push forward. Mm. And at the end of the two years, nothing was going to stop me, Jade. I was like, okay, that happened. Mm -hmm. Now we're moving forward. And the little girl, the little girl, the six-year-old girl in my grandmother's backyard was back. Mm -hmm. And she was like, let's go. Let's go. Let's yeah. go. Okay. And I've not looked back since. <laughs> okay. Gear shift four. Go, go, go. Gear shift four was returning home to share my knowledge. So right. I went back to Jamaica after New York. That's I did my degree in New York. I went back to Jamaica to work at the national school there and I became a member of the national company there. Mm -hmm. And I think that afforded me some grounding. Mm -hmm. I was back where I started. Mm -hmm. I was able to share all the knowledge that I gained in Cuba and just from my experiences with others. So I was lecturing there in modern dance while also dancing in the national company and creating choreography for them and doing a lot of choreography actually in the Jamaica industry for stage, um, in theatre, uh, within dance companies there. And reaching a really good point in my life at that point where I was in demand as a creator, I was in demand as a performing artist mm -hmm. and still growing and trying to pull as much as I could from the people who are ahead of me. Mm -hmm. um, and then again, recognizing at a point that I wanted to level up again. Mm. 
So I wanted to really understand a bit more about choreography. I practiced it. It was an innate thing that I did, but I didn't have a formal education in making. Right. Uh, and so I decided to come to London because I remembered when I came to London, that was the push that made me switch gears to go to Cuba. Right. And I always felt like London was a good catalyst yeah. for me creatively. Yeah. So again, Jade, I hopped a plane, Aye. came to London to do my master's in choreography. Right. So that was another gear shift. So where do you, master's in choreography, where, was there a space that you went to? Did you learn that organically from just, you know, being in the scene or? I went to Laban, but I would say that it's interesting when people decide sometimes that you need formal training in something. Mm -hmm. In retrospect, the degree didn't really give me anything extra. Yeah. That you Maybe one could argue it gave me a piece of paper that made me feel like, okay, now you're certified. Mm -hmm. But making was something that I had been doing from my 15 mm. and it was in the practice of making of creating and as a performer as well of learning from other makers I was getting all the information that I think I needed right so when I came across I did my degree but I think I learned more just in the practical aspects of making mm. And so um, my last, I guess, gear shift was deciding to not return to Jamaica, um, staying in London and having a go at making a career, having a go at manifesting that six-year-old dream yeah. um, in the big old city of London. And many, many years later, London has treated me well. Yeah. I had a good career as a performing artist on stage, both in contemporary dance and on stage in musical theatre mm -hmm. and transitioning across into choreography and movement direction in theatre and now in film so yeah here I am Woo! I mean I just like skipped a lot of things but yeah <laughs> yeah but but even from that we can see like a real drive and a growth in you and it's all about that self-motivation that I think that I love so much about you and ha in any discourse that we've had it's always about belief and push and drive absolutely and so it actually now makes sense why you're like that because <laughs> hearing that story is really really inspirational man really so how long have you now been in London then you... uh from 2006 so that's what wow that's like you're the one that's like good almost 15 15 <laughs> that's like 15 years 15 years wow wow I know time flies I didn't I didn't know what was going to happen when I decided to stay on mm -hmm. and again it's 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 kind of that fight I say that from like developing countries we tend to we're fighters yeah because you don't yeah. you don't have the same opportunities yeah so yeah. you know I remember after finishing the degree going what do you want to do? I want to perform. You need to go to auditions now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, walking into auditions with like three, 400, 500 people, and there's only like one job on offer mm -hmm. and me going, that job is mine. And yeah, yeah. even blood on the dance floor, you know, mm -hmm. um, and getting work, mm -hmm. you know, getting work as a byproduct of, of just self-belief and, and determination. And it's, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not easy. And you don't always get your yeses, but I think the no's are really important to character building because yeah. if you can hurdle over that no, mm -hmm. there's a yes around the corner. Well, that you know, there. there's a yes around the corner. What? I'm yeah. not gonna lie, the no's sometimes they sting. They sting. They sting. <laughs> Especially if you wanted but, it, but but you know, I believe looking back that. Every no is for good reason. That's you right. just don't know in that instance. That's because right. the yes that's coming is going to help you to grow in a different way. Mm -hmm. And sometimes things come full circle. Like I auditioned for Lion King when I lived in Jamaica and I, I got into like their shortlist. I made it to their final eight. Yeah. But I didn't get the job then. And many years later, I auditioned when I lived in London. Yeah. 
and I got the job. And you're in. Yeah. So yeah. sometimes, you know, you need to knock on doors a little bit more too. Yeah, yeah. So- ah, Shelly! Okay. Um, so just touching then on the current work that you're doing when you're talking yes. about theatre and film um, and how you then want to take that into your future prospects and future work that you want to maybe create or things that you would want to do um I'd love to know more about what what you're up to now um without being too prescriptive but you know I I, I just I'm fascinated with with your work ethic so what have you got in the pipeline and what's happening with your life now in the pipeline I start actually next week Monday yeah. working on a, the Bob Marley musical, which is called hey! Get Up Stand Up. Get up, stand up. <laughs> be like this. Stand up. The audience. <laughs> so I am the choreographer for that musical. Say hey, one more time. And <laughs> I am the choreographer Ooh. on Get Up Stand Up the musical. I'm through. And I'm not gonna lie, that feels full circle. Yes. Like yeah. when I got that phone call from my agent to let me know that they were looking at me for this project, I think my eyes just welled up because I was like, yeah. this was my six-year-old self. This is all I ever wanted. Mm-hmm. I mean, I used to force my cousins because I grew up with lots of people in my house yeah. to uh, do my choreography when I was six, seven, eight. I was like, come, let's learn that thriller choreography from Michael Jackson. They weren't dancers, but they were with me. And to be able to create on a musical that is within the Jamaican culture about a Jamaican icon mm. for West End mm. is everything to me. Yeah. And I believe everything to that six-year-old child, which is why I said, I would say to her, you're not crazy, it's gonna happen. Mm. Um, so that's in the pipeline, which I'm really excited about going into a room with a wonderful set of people Mm-hmm. creating this musical that's about this man who's so important to Jamaican culture and to music globally with such a positive message mm-hmm. especially in these times. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also working on a big feature film mm-hmm. and what I've loved most about doing that is being able to give back to the people in my community. Right. So I love sharing my knowledge with others I love sharing my opportunities with others. Mm -hmm. So I was able to get a plethora of dancers in to do this very big job so that they could also share their light and shine their light as well Mm. within the film industry. Mm. You know, lots of them hadn't done film before. So this was their like first big kind of film opportunity. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, Jade, I'm the kind of person where if the door opens up for me, I'm going to bring people in with me. Right, right. So, you know, people did that for me and I'm going to extend that invitation to others as well. So those are kind of two of the things that are happening, but, um, you know, what's rolling and it seems to be happening a little bit more is I'm heading into doing choreography in musical theatre. I've done a lot of choreography for um, plays, and for productions on the theater stage that maybe aren't so musical oriented. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that shift is happening. And then also this shift into doing choreography and movement direction on film. So I give thanks and accept accept what's coming from the universe Mm. and I embrace it as another shift. It's, It's incredible. I'm so excited for you. One of the things that you did say was, you know, people have opened the door for you. This is the last, last segment of the show um and I think we kind of just want to finish it with um potentially I know there's so many people that have probably you know gave way to your awesomeness and allowed that to penetrate the the community but if you had to pick like one person that really and it doesn't have to be you know industry practice people it could be family friends whoever whomever but one person who really sticks into your mind is somebody who has really encouraged your career. And if you could give them their flowers, who would that person be? I'm going to be your extremely naughty first guest. Oh, yes, I know. Because honestly, Jade, I can't cite 
one person. Of course. Um, there's a saying, it takes a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in Jamaica, there was a village mm -hmm. that hoisted me up. Mm -hmm. So I have a village of about eight names, which I've written down that I'm going to, I'm going to say every one of them Do because I need to give them their flowers. Do you think? So these are the people who saw the talent in a young girl mm -hmm. and decided to help me to hone it, mm -hmm. whether it was giving me opportunities or whether it was just providing a space to nurture my artistry, mm. they saw something inside of me and they, they sprinkled some, some water on my flowers. Right, right. So right. these people are Tony Wilson, mm -hmm. Barbara McDaniel, Lantwinette Steins, Rex Nettleford, Arsenio Andrade, Joseph Robinson, Jackie Guy, and Howard Daly, who said, the dance is bigger than you. The dance, and that's my village. That, really, thank you so so much. You are an incredible, formidable woman, and I am just in in complete awe of you all the time. But thank you. There were so many like gems and nuggets in there that I didn't know about your entire history and where you've you know what it's taken for you to get here. And um, thank you, thank you for your time, for your light. Um, and the best of luck for the new future endeavors that you're going to go into. So, thank you, Jade Hackett. I just want to lift you up as well. Thank you. And thank you for the opportunity. But also, I want to, you know, be just as ecstatic about you and what you're doing, mm. and you know, your future. And I want to say how much I admire your work as well oh. and your work ethic. So I'm going to give you flowers as well, Jade Hackett. I take them humbly. <laughs> all right thanks everybody for tuning in um and we'll see you next week take care bye